Hey everyone, Farmington Mayor Nate Duckett. We are at the Health and Human Performance Center here at San Juan College for today's episode. We're going to be talking about outdoor recreation equipment rentals, outdoor recreation fun. We're on the Frisbee golf course, the climbing wall, the ropes course, everything that San Juan College has to offer that's contributing here to our outdoor recreation mission. everyone, Farmington Mayor Nate Duckett here today at San Juan College Health and Human Performance Center. We're going to be talking about outdoor recreation and the offerings provided here by San Juan College and specifically with my friend Roman McCabe. Roman is the coordinator of outdoor recreation here for the college. Roman, thanks for joining us. Yes, thank you uh, and glad, glad to be on the mayor's table. I want to invite all of you out to the HHPC. We're the westest building here on campus. It is the gymnasium. Uh, it is also where the outdoor rental center is located alongside the indoor climbing wall. Yeah, awesome. You can see exactly where we're at right here in the Performance Center. This climbing wall, I can tell you, Roman, is somebody who's got a, who's got a daughter who's interested in climbing and has a group of friends who like to climb. This is one of their favorite places to come. Oh, yeah, definitely. Actually, we have a bouldering competition coming up in a couple of Mondays from now that maybe they could take advantage of. We'll talk about that a little bit. You can see the different colors and things on the, uh, on the climbing wall. I mean, are those kind of based on skill sets and things like that? Yeah, so it is our route setter's uh, way of identifying a degree of difficulty of a route, but it is a trail on a route, let's say. So on a map, you have a trail of a start and beginning. This is the trail of the start and the end point. So it's, it's a bouldering competition, so it doesn't go all the way up to the top. So the idea okay. is to follow the same colors, and that's to set a, a, a certain degree of difficulty. Now, if I was interested in coming down to the Performance Center and climbing on the wall, would I be able to do that any time of day? Is there specific times that somebody can do that? Uh, so we're open Monday, Tuesday from 2 to 8.30 and 3.30 to 8.30 on that Tuesday. Thursday is the same. We're closed on Wednesdays, uh, but Friday we try to open up at by 2 and close by 7.30 as well. Saturday from 12 to 5. Is all that information available kind of on the San Juan College website? Uh, it is underneath uh, Health and Recreation. Uh, you'll find the HHPC there as well. Awesome. So the bouldering event, is it too late to sign up? Can people sign up now? And, and what, what date is it on? Uh, it is on October 30th. We do have pre-registration. We're about to send out uh, here in a little bit. But you can come into the HHPC, talk to the Climbing Wall staff, and they'll get you signed up. It's $10 per climber. There's different age groups. So there's age protections, all of it from five years old to uh, some of the pros in the area. Awesome. Now, this is just obviously one piece of what you do and what you kind of manage here. We're going to get into the outdoor recreation equipment rental component, because I know that's a big part of providing our community opportunities to have accessible equipment to go and do all the awesome things here in the area. But we also have the Frisbee golf course that you guys built here three or four years ago? Uh, it's It's been there in three phases. It, the first phase was in 2014, but um, the new baskets or the new locations are up on top, and it's been going to find a good three or four years right now. So one of the other things we're going to do after we go into the Equipment Center we're going to go out and play a hole and kind of check out what the college has to offer for its uh, Frisbee golf course. And do you do a lot of events um, here? And, and how many holes are a part of this Frisbee golf course? Uh, we host an annual turkey toss November 11th, second weekend of November of, it, of every year. We partner with United Way. And it's a turkey toss with a charity give back. We get the turkeys and we take them over to Echo Food Bank or United Way San Juan takes them over to Echo Food Bank. It's a way we give back for the holidays. Uh, we do have leagues as well as other events that come through on the disc golf course and uh, you can actually rent out disc golf equipment right inside the outdoor equipment rental center. That's great to know. Yeah, we, we've got a very robust, what I've seen at least a very robust and active uh, Frisbee golf group. And, and do, they, do they go by some special name? Uh, there are a few clubs within the area. There's a San Juan Basin Disc Golf Club. There are actually folks that come from Durango, the San Luis Valley. Cortez, even guys out of Sholo, Flax out, they all come here because we have about four or five different courses uh, that cater to the every different level of player within the area. Uh -huh. uh, and specifically on our course, we have 29 baskets out there. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a big course. Yeah. So the other part that I, I can't, can't forget about, of course, is the ropes course. Uh -huh. And I know a lot of groups will come out, they do leadership type type courses out there. And, is, and can you talk a little bit about how you guys utilize that facility? So the uh, outdoor 
uh, the High Endeavors Challenge course. It is more so of an educational tool, so it's a programming element where we have high elements, the Alpine Tower, the Net Leap, or a giant swing, uh, but it's a group, uh, a group effort to where folks can come up and receive facilitation on uh, what they may need to improve on, communication, teamwork, uh, maybe values or ethics within the workplace, uh, from you know small kids to just learning it for an experience or all the way up to the top corporate level if they want to uh, you know, work on a few things within the workplace. So it's uh, it, it's got a, a clear cut and dry uh, area of opportunity. Great. Now, if you're interested in utilizing the ropes course, Roman, it's got to be for groups of like eight to ten or more. Is that right? Yeah, eight, at least eight to ten people, and for about a, a, a good learning experience, will take on the challenge course a good two to two and a half hours or so to to, to come away with you know a good solid nugget. Good. So if people are interested in learning more about kind of what's happening with outdoor recreation in the Capone here at San Juan College, again, go to the website. What is it? Uh, we, it's the San Juan College website, but we're underneath the uh, health and human performance icon, and you just find health and recreation. That's where we're located. We have the Outdoor Equipment Rental Center, the climbing wall, and the ropes course, as well as our bike park and trails that go around the perimeter of the San Juan College. No, no doubt. Well. That brings up a really interesting point because San Juan College has been engaged with uh, FAST. Yep, Farmington Area Single Track. Our local mountain bike nonprofit who's out there really, really making it accessible for young riders, riders of all ages, to come out and enjoy mountain biking here in the area. But just south of us here, uh, we've got the, the bike park. San Juan right. College Bike Park. Yeah, you can see the big conics up on top of the hill and FAST has done a tremendous uh, way of integrating the youth to come out but also developing interest within the community for the bike park and um, you know that type of interest got a bike park established now and you know it's, it's a it's a great place for ownership and uh, where they can hone their skills as well but it's also a great place where they can call home on their home track also right well and it's got so many different components to that bike park I mean for all different skill sets but I've been really impressed with, with how hard you guys have worked with fast to kind of bring that all together and speaking with uh, Ed Desplas here at the college, he's talked about the fact that we're going to be adding a bathroom to that facility as well. So you just kind of see this vision and the way that we're growing it. Um, and I thank you guys for your partnership in the outdoor recreation arena and kind, kind of growing it here in Farmington. Yeah, no problem. And, you know, it's just a, a, a combination of great minds coming together for one goal. And, you know, that's the, the health and the human and the performance. And that's why we're inside the HHPC. <laughs> I love it. Well, hey, we're going to take a little trip now and go into the Outdoor Recreation Equipment Rental Center. Give people an idea of what equipment is available here for you. It's accessible. I don't think you have to be a college student to do it. Uh, we're open to the public. You do not have to be a college or a member of the HHPC, and you can come in. We uh, work by way of reservation, as well as our open hours on Mondays, Fridays, and Saturdays. All right. Well, let's go into the Equipment Center and check it out. Right. We're here now in the Outdoor Recreation Equipment Rental Center. Roman McCabe, kind of take us through kind of what we're looking at and the different things that you guys rent out and maybe some of the education that you provide and different programming that people can partake in. Yeah, so we have seasonal gear. Uh, right now we're in our transitional point of the summer to the fall. So a lot of folks are getting out and camping, uh, uh, backpacking, and get, they're getting onto the trails as well. Uh, but also uh, as we move into the, the powdered season or the snow season, we have um, our stuff ready uh, and, and ready for supply. We have snowboards, uh, cross-country skis, as well as uh, everyone's a fan of uh, snowshoeing within the area, you know, it's a very easy, accessible, and very easy to teach, more so just like walking and hiking. Well, it's interesting because I can see back here uh, through this door, I mean, there you have a lot of snowshoes. And so, I mean, is that one of the sports, you know, I, don't, I hear some about snowshoeing, but is that something that's really popular that you guys help supply the, the shoes for? Yeah, uh, within the past year and a half or so, we've created our uh, uh, Meet Up in the Mountains uh, programming, so which is another programming opportunity as well, uh, where we would meet up at Viacito Lake or up at Purgatory or one of the uh, the actual Nordic tracks within the, within the Four Corners area. And we would supply uh, the snowshoes as well as our, uh, our, 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 our snow sticks as well. And you know we would provide the instruction, take them out to the middle of the lake, have lunch, um, and then just give them some overall uh, avalanche education about the snow, how to be safe while they're out there as well, how to, how, how to go about and pursue the outdoors safely um, because we want them to take their families out and have them uh, always come back in, in a nice, safe manner. No, I'm glad to hear that that's a component of it. 
of the progress. Not just, hey, we're gonna release this, this to you, good luck. You're right. You know, we hope you make it back. That's not, that's not what this is about at all. Mm -hmm. Part of what I, I think is, is desperately needed for anybody who's interested because we want to get people out there to explore it. That's one of the benefits of living here in the Four Corners is access to this. You don't get this in the big cities. Here you've got access to the mountains, to the rivers, to the trails. Um, and it's all seasonal. You've got different Correct, things you yeah. can do every season. So um, let's talk a little bit more about that. But you've got... Like you've got your snowboards. Do you guys rent boots separately from the boards? Uh, so for the package deal, it, it, it's the snowboard, the binding, as well as the boots uh, and a helmet. Helmet is also optional. We try to uh, give them the helmet the entire time. Uh, but we have uh, cross-country skis and we'll, that we'll bring out. You know, and we're moving from rafting or watercraft into the, the, the snow season right now. Um, <clears throat> but the, the uh, snowshoes as well as uh, cross-country skis, uh, I'd say the skis take a little bit more of education and more so finding the destination to do so. You got to have the right type of, uh, of snow to get on and, and, and cross country ski and, I, and get the right experience that you're looking for. Sure. Now, do you do any alpine skiing? Is that do you guys rent out skis for to go to Purgatory and, and ski as well? Uh, we do not currently rent no. downhill skis. Okay. Um, um, you know that is a, a, a more of a technician's, uh, um, you know. Good. Well, right there. Mm -hmm. good to know. Good to know. So we got show. We got mm -hmm. snowshoeing. Anything else back here? Um, camping gear. We have backpacks, uh, um, tents, as well as sleeping bags, sleeping pads. So we uh, hopefully outfit. Uh, sometimes the whole family once they go out to wherever they're gonna, they're gonna they're gonna go camp. Uh, sometimes they don't have all of these, and sometimes they don't know that they do need these, or they're an actual option, so that they now now know that they can come here and rent these these items out. You know, we've got great stores in town that sell a lot of this equipment, obviously. Mm -hmm. But for somebody who's a novice, they're just getting into this. This really gives them an opportunity, a low cost, in order to take the equipment out and go learn how to use it, take their families. Um, which I think is just great for that, again, that accessibility component of it. Yeah, we're in a great area within the Four Corners, and the folks that come here to this area, uh, like the climbing wall, are, are, are really novice. And like you said, in, in the beginner stages of pursuing the outdoors, so we want to give them the right information um, you know, that's valid for them so that they can, like I said, be safe, but also really get the right experience is what they're looking for. Sometimes you go out, you have an experience with mountain biking. It might not be the great one you're looking for because you see the good uh, collages that go along with it. Uh, you know, and so just giving them the right information and details will, will help them prolong that experience from the first time to the next time and for the family experiences as well. All right. Well, yeah, I see right here you've got some of the prizes that I believe are going to be for the turkey toss mm -hmm. tournament. Is that right? That is correct. Uh, we, every year, uh, as I say, United Way San Juan, we partner and the turkeys go right over to the uh, Echo Food Bank. But these baskets they are given away. These are the 30th baskets that we give, we've given away in five years. Uh, that's one of our staple events of the year. That's what we do in, uh, for the disc golf community. We give away baskets. Those are for... Uh, five first place winners and then the bags go to second place or we give it away to our biggest divisions and that's how we decide who's going to um, you know, win these baskets here. Awesome. And you know, we're creating the interest and trying to uh, uh, up the level of the skill within the area and you know, that's the reason why we've got so many courses in the, in the area right now and you know, it's generating that interest. Well, talk, talk about that too because it's not just, you got 27 holes, is that, or did you say We've got 20, 29 baskets 29 here baskets. that are, that are permanent, permanently in the ground, okay. all within probably a 20 mile radius. There's maybe 100 baskets in the ground out here. So we have Lions Wilderness Park, we have that yeah. uh, Frisbee Golf Course there, which has how many holes? Uh, there's 27 there as well. 27 there, 29 here. 29 there. Uh, Aztec's got 18, Majestic's got 21. Uh, Tally Park has uh, nine plus a, a few more as well. Um, and then there's you know, talks of a few more other, other courses in the works as well. And that's not just the, the, the permanent ones, but we also have setups. So we have meetups where people will bring their own baskets, just like these. And we'll set up at a park along with um, you know, agreements with the city as well uh, to, to set up, let's say, at Berg Park. So again, we're, we're making and bringing the game to make it more accessible to five-year-olds or the, the working mom who can push a stroller out there. Sure, that's great. Well, let's kind of mosey over here and uh -huh. check out what else you guys have. So we got some water crafts. Yeah, so right here we have our sit on top kayaks as well as an inflatable kayak. These are two of our most sought after and the most accessible for the beginner. Uh, the most accessible usually means you know, most of the time the most safe way you can get back on or you can safely approach the activity as well. Uh, the sit on top kayak gives you the opportunity to feel like you're in a river kayak without being cockpitted in. And so you have the leg lap, uh, uh, once you flip over, you know, it's not how you flip or when you flip over, uh, you're able to wet exit and save yourself and get back on. 
the inflatable kayak, it's, it, it, it's, it's a buddy paddle, it's a ducky, it's pretty simple and you know, everybody likes these two because again, they're safe and everybody um, you know, has a lot of fun with these as well. So if, if anybody came in here and they wanted to rent um, either one of these watercraft, does, does it come with any type of education? Again, for folks who may be new to it, do you have any type, maybe some programming that people might be interested in and you take them out and kind of show them the basics of how to use these? Yeah, so everybody that comes in here, we, we at least want our equipment to be used properly. Uh, it also come back in, in a nice, safe and orderly fashion as well. So giving them the key points of how to haul, how to inflate, how to bring them back, how to conduct it while you're in the water as well. Um, I mean, evidently no sharp points around, you know, the boat as well, but more so how to rig it down to the vehicle so it doesn't fall off of the vehicle also. Um, you know, paddling and how to inflate, deflate. So there is quite a bit of information that goes into just, you know, getting the boat ready for you to go out and paddle and then you sure. give them the paddle and that's another, you know, you know, uh, uh, you know, you know, skill that they use. But also that's one of the things you want to experience also. And then, you know, you give them a, a few more steps on that as well. Uh, as for programming, how to learn how to do this stuff, we, we, we have our Friday floats or our, um, our meetup floats over us uh, at Farmington Lake. And we'll take about 10 to 15 of these boats and um, there's a sign up for it so where folks will come out and learn each one of these watercrafts for a couple of hours. They'll switch out. Um, also a great way to develop teams. And, you know, we actually took out the marketing team from here at Salmon College one time all on the boats uh, as a team builder. I love it. Well, and on top, on top of the watercraft, you also provide, you know, the safety equipment. We've got our life jackets here. Uh, I saw a big supply of life jackets over there, the paddles. I mean, is there any other thing? I mean, do you guys have helmets for those who want to use these on the river? Are those a component at all? Also? Oh yeah, definitely. We, we, we urge folks to, to use helmets if they are going on uh, white water kayaks or even white water as well. Moving water, anything that's moving or developing kinesthetic energy. Uh, uh, helmets, you know, the best option, but any, any type of water activity, um, you know, it's a must that they do take the, 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 uh, yeah, the uh, uh, personal flotation device, it doesn't matter. These are classified so they're able to float uh, river, ocean, big water. Um, so, you know, all of these, you know, drive a little bit more comfort into the, to the family or the people that are going out. Um, but also, again, you know, because you have it on doesn't mean it's going to be on properly. So you got to show them how to properly wear sure. it. And, and, you know, it's only going to work for you as long as you use it the right way. Right. Well, man, it looks like you've got kind of everything situated here for anybody who wants to go out and explore the wilderness, explore the waterways, explore the trails, summer, winter, fall. I mean, I love this. Is there anything else you want to make sure people know about the rental center, uh, hours of operation, and maybe where they get more information? Yeah, you can find us at uh, salmoncollege.edu. Find the uh, Health and Human Performance Center icon. We're under Health and Recreation. You can find us also uh, on Facebook, uh, Outdoor Equipment Rental Center, as well as Instagram. And um, we're located, again, just on the Westest building on, here on campus. You can just ask the folks at the front counter as well. Uh, our hours, we're open on Mondays, Fridays, and Saturdays, but we're mo for the most part, we're open by reservation. So if you call the Outdoor Equipment Rental Center number and set up uh, a reservation along with myself or one of the staff, we'll be able to get uh, the gear in here. This just came back from uh, a boat and float event who, who rented it out and scheduled it last night and brought it back. So we're able to accommodate at different times when we're not open, uh, like right now. Okay. Roman, well, look, I know one of the other things we wanted to do while we were together today was go out and throw some Frisbees, check out one of the holes here at the course. So if we're good here, you want to wrap up and go outside? We can do that. All right. Thank you. Hey, everybody. We're out behind the Health and Human Performance Center here at San Juan College. We're in between the building and, of course, Penny Hills Golf Course. And right now we're on tee box number five, par three, 299 yards, uphill. Let's talk about it, Roman. What are we looking at? Uh, so the arroyo dives down and a few things just to take into account the trees as well as the wind. Uh, also, but we are just on the south side of the HHPC. So we're on the outside of the building. Um, our challenge course starts on this end and it makes its way all the way up to Pitney Hills Boulevard. It crosses Sunrise Parkway Road and it ends actually right back down here, right by the Pitney Hills Golf Course. I love it. So one of the cool things about this, you can start on one and just kind of work your way around back to where you began. Yeah, so we have three, uh, three, three different nine hole layouts and all of these can be found on UDisc or we have a map over at the trailhead as well. 
and it just shows you a different variation of all the different holes and different ways that we can uh, map out layouts for folks who have different levels of play. Cool. Well, we're out here. It's a perfect day, by the way. I mean, it's a little bit breezy, uh, which can have some impact on where these Frisbees are going to go. Mm -hmm. um, but there are so many different kinds of discs, right? you know, and they all do different things. And there's, there's components here. My speed's a 12, my guide's a five. I got a 0.5, negative 0.5 turn, fade. They all mean different things, uh, but you've got a driver. A lot of times you'll have your, your wedge and then your putter. And uh, why don't you show us how to throw this driver? The That's driver. what I want to see. Okay. So the driver, I'm definitely going to pull out because I can see how far the distance is. Uh, and just like golf, uh, you know, you, you, you got to have stance and um, you are the golf club in this process. So with the release port and how, how fast it's going to come out. And I'm going to take the wind into account. That was a nice shot. Look at that. Get in the hole. That was really good. <laughs> Wait, you just planned that. <laughs> totally planned uh, that. Almost, almost got the uh, the mayor's ace right there. That would have been a fantastic moment. That, that was just uh, a, a conventional backhand, just how a regular Frisbee throw a, uh, throw a Frisbee. Uh, me being a disc golfer, we don't say the F word. No? No. What do you say? Disc, disc golf. Disc golf. No Frisbee. No F words. No, no F -word. Frisbees. <laughs> got it. All right, so I'm going to throw it differently. Obviously less, uh, less skilled at this, but when it comes to this, like the end of the grass here, that's, 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 that's the point, yeah, right? Yeah, that's the end of the okay. tea pad, yeah. All right, here we go. Oh, too much air. Woo, that's going to be a long one. Air time. <laughs> <laughs> stay down on it. Got to stay down on it. <laughs> so you can see the wind definitely take and traject the, the disc there. So um, I mean, ideally you have like maybe a six foot to a 20 foot air pocket of where the disc is gonna fly straight to the basket. Okay. Anything lower or higher than that or at a different angle, it's gonna take them and manipulate your disc either way. Awesome. All right, well, let's go find our, let's, well, we're gonna find yours. I don't know where I'm gonna find mine at, but we're gonna hunt it down. All right, we're gonna try <laughs> to get ourselves a birdie on this. So we'll walk from one spot. Roman, uh, we found my first shot. Uh -huh. A little off to the right down here in, in the wash. This is one of the unique components about playing disc golf here in, in northern New Mexico is the landscape. Right. This is a challenging place to be throwing discs around uh, to try and get it in a basket. So here I am. I'm stuck behind these trees. I've used the driver to not go very far. But you can switch out clubs, so to speak, switch out discs based on how far away you are from the, the net, right? Yes. Uh, the game is really a user preference game. So... Some folks can play with a putter the entire game and drive a putter just about as far or even further or even more okay. accurate with a, with than a driver. Um, so really, uh, it, it's by coming out and knowing the terrain, also knowing the landscape. There's The trees really serve as like a natural out of bounds, so you got to walk and actually know where to land out here on these courses within Farmington, just so that uh, I mean, you can go from birdie to bogey in a heartbeat out here. Yeah, this is one of the things I've always noted about playing out at Lions is you really need to pay attention to where your disc is going. Right. <laughs> because if you don't, which tree was it? <laughs> is it up in the tree? Is it down in the tree? Did I land it over in the bush? I mean, you've really got to pay attention to what's going on. Yeah, every every pinyon and juniper tree just looks the same. And now, uh, I mean, we're blind to the basket. We don't even know where it's at. Sometimes you get a little disorientated as well. So just knowing where the beacon is or where to throw is, uh, you know, again, really saves you a lot of a lot of time as you sure. come out here to these courses. Now, do you change which, how you throw when you've got, you know, obstacles in your way? Do you, do you still, you're still going at it the same way? Uh, I'm still going to, uh, first off, assess. I'm going to play the percentages. I'm going to play the most wide open spot. Uh, just like regular ball golf, I'm going to pull out something well, I, that, that I know is going to be dependable or all reliable that's going to hook left. I take the wind into account. My wind threw my disc over to the right. That's why it's here. Um, so I'm going to probably go right over, up over these trees and throw it pretty hard because I'm going up into the elevation. But I'm playing the percentages out this way because, I, I mean, right now I'm at an upshot trying to save a, save a par at least. I like that. Uh -huh. Playing the percentages. Yeah, you play the percentages. Just like regular ball golf. Well, regular ball golf, I don't know if I play the percentages very well either. <laughs> but I definitely try. Well, so we, this is the lie. That's that's the point where we're throwing from. Uh huh. And then do you want me to do it or do you want to do it? Oh, you, you can make I'll your take throw my shot. and then right. I, I can throw one after you, yeah. Okay. So we're going uphill. It's probably 
uh, about, 50 yards, uh, 70 about, yards? Yeah, about another, yeah, 50 yards, uh, which is about 130 feet or so, give or take. Okay. Now, for a minute, but do I have to throw from that point? Uh, so is that how does that I've always wondered that as well so just like ball golf that's where the ball lies okay. um, you have a square or a disc worth of print where you can put your foot to step around these are rules of golf okay. uh, professional disc golf association these are the rules that we follow so you can run up but your foot or your plant foot has to be within uh, within like a papers your plant foot has to be yeah so you can okay. walk this way and then boom out that way or you can run up to it but your plant foot just has to be r right behind the disc in that area. And you know, there are rules just like regular, regular ball of golf if you make that infraction. All right, I'm gonna try not to kill the cameraman and uh, get this one up the hill. So as close to that as I can. Oh, oh. the percentages. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now show us how to actually do this. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna try to get it all the way up on top of the hill. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna throw a putter really hard up out to the right. And I let the disc do its work. Oh, pop some right. air as okay. well. I like it. All right, all one and upward. Shot number three. Roman, of course, you're sitting, you know, 15 feet from the pin, so to speak. Looking at birdie. Did you already throw it in there? No, I am waiting for the rest of the crew. Uh, uh, etiquette goes into the game, furthest out throw. So I'm All gonna... right, so up the hill, into the wind. Make sure you got sure footing. Yep. Oh, ah, went left. Yay! All right. All right. Roman, uh, here for my fourth shot now. I've I've already, uh, I'm, on, I'm on double bogey if I make it, right? No, bogey, I'll be bogey if I make this shot. But if you're in a bush like I am in this situation, what's the rules when I throw out of here? Uh, so, so the same rule as down at before, you gotta have at least one supporting point behind the disc to throw. Uh, sometimes you're in a compromisable spot and it looks like, uh, I mean, evidently, you're just gonna be able to put a leg behind it and what really matters is how much force or how much swing path you're going to get to generate okay. momentum to put at it or to at least throw um usually this will be an upshot but um square to the basket so the, you can say there's an imaginary line where your other foot cannot pass right here yeah but one foot's got to be still behind the disc at least okay <clears throat> all right so i'm picking it up somewhere right here <laughs> yep that work yep all right i'm gonna play the wind No wind. Roll. That's right. We gotta roll. We're close. All right. Here's my my first shot. So, so really, just like your shot, I'm in the tree. You know, it's trying to find position again. I, I try to find a spot where I'm going to press off my legs and still be able to get my shot through. Sometimes even I have in my swing path, I got trees or bushes or whatever. Real states, you can't break anything or move it out of the way. So I'm going to lean out more and try to, you know, uh, uh, I mean, it changes my whole putt almost. And we've got a birdie. Oh. So yeah. on that, that, that's not a birdie. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so the first one is the birdie. I got a two on it. Good job. Um, and, and you know, that's however many throws it takes. It may take 10 throws to get here, um, two throws, but still just playing it out. And the idea is, is to come back and uh, I, look, I like to look at these as small term goals every time. Uh, 300 feet, boom, go on to the next one. You got 27 more tries. 27 more tries. 28 more tries, yeah. I love it. All right, so Roman, I, I, while we're standing here, I just want to ask this question of you and, and you're somebody that clearly is passionate about this game and what you do for San Juan College, but what is it about, uh, disc golf that makes you play it and love it as much as you do uh i, I truly know it's the, the 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 therapy that i get out of it or the takeaway the the feeling that i get i like it, this game because it's a hard game it's very humbling as well and it's one thing that i can't go out and play perfectly every time uh although the course um 
I'm the, I'm the designer of it. I try to come out and do a great job every time, but you know, it's so humbling every time uh, uh, that it, it just, you know, it, it, it recreates, you know, your emotions again. It's a great, a great place to meet people who are maybe in a field of stress or so who, who need that type of therapy or maybe need to get out um, to hike a little bit more or so. And, you know, it's, 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 it's an easy way to, to hike. Um, we're going to go play 18 baskets or we're going to go hike five miles, you know, right. 18 baskets might sound a little bit more than five miles, even though you're going to walk six miles on the 18 baskets. Sure. And again, you know, just the thought of the small, you know, short term goals of getting out, but it's the excitement of going one basket to another and try to make it in. You know, it's like basketball outside on 27 different courts. Yeah. And I think that's a great point. I mean, huh? people may not be, be able to, or, or get that motivating factor to say, you know what, I'm going to go out today and I'm going to run five miles or I'm going to walk five miles. But maybe if I'm taking these around and I'm trying a skill sport to get it in that basket, I'm going to be doing something that's fun and I'm going to get that exercise in. And I mean, there's no better days right now than to be outside. Oh yeah, this is where you want. This is where we belong. Oh yeah, definitely. You're going to hit on all those, you know, those those nice spots in your mind, and you know, emotionally, you're going to walk away, uh, drawing out the feelings that maybe you would not get elsewhere. Uh, and again, it is a spot to maybe let out aggression and also have some fun as well. Um, yell as loud as you can, and it's, it's, it's almost to a point where you can almost get lost and it's still an adventure out here because there's nobody out here and you know it's just you and solely the course and now it's all just you and pure creativity. I like that, I like that thought. I mean, seeing you just make this shot here. So my kids and I have played this for a long time, but we usually just pop out of the bush and we stand at the side. Right. So we're gonna play by the actual rules, which you, you know, we play golf. Golf, you've got those rules, you gotta uh -huh. follow those rules. I think one other thing about this is it's such a great family sport. Right. I mean, any skill set can come out here and throw the disc around and just get some enjoyment out of it. I'm sure there's frustrating parts too. Sometimes you can't find your disc. But when you're looking for your disc, you may find someone else's disc, and that's always a bonus. Oh, definitely. If there, if you find a name on the bottom of a disc, make sure make you, sure you call them. Yeah, uh, just like the etiquette of uh, um, the, the golf across the fence over the way at Pena Hills. You know, there's etiquette that goes along to it, just like rules. So you want to return somebody's disc to them because they put the energy to do so as well. That's and, a great you know, point. they might do the same for you as well. As somebody who's spent some time on the Lions course, I would just say, I just ask people, please, you know, take care of what is yours. Be good stewards of the course. Fix the things that seem broke. Pick up trash. Be somebody who's willing to say, look, how do I want this to look uh, for those who are coming behind me? Let's make it nicer than what it is today. Yeah, correct. Roman, anything else you want to add on this, uh, this hole before I go over and try and make my double bogey? Um, well, golf is a humbling game. Come out and try. Uh, totally free. We have discs down, you know, in the uh, rental center. You can find them at any um, sporting, uh, sporting shop sport, here, here yeah. in town. And uh, as I said, it's free. Come out and play. And, uh, you know, have yourself a good day. All right. Let's go see if I can make a couple bogeys. All right. We got Mayor Duckett standing behind. Uh, this is a nice eight footer. Oh. Mayor Duckett, Farmington Mayor. <laughs> it all takes practice. Roman, thanks for taking us out, man. I appreciate you. Hey, thanks, thank, thank you for coming out and, you know, uh, coming out and having a good time. No, this is a great time. And, hey, if you're looking for something fun to do on a weeknight, on a weekend, uh, just something, hey, let's, let's go out as a family or let me just go out on my own and check out these amazing views, not just from San Juan College's course that we're highlighting here today, but the other courses here in San Juan County. Get involved. We've got great organizations who are out. They have scheduled events. Uh, again, this is just another component of what makes living here in San Juan County so awesome. So thank you for joining us today on the Mayor's Table. We'll check you out here next time. <laughs>